Okay, next we're going to look at sonar. And I'll apologize in advance. I had to uh, change some of the sound things. I can't use my, <clears throat> my normal professional mic. I have to use the mic that's on the uh, webcam because sonar tends to be... Uh, <laughs> it has its own way of, of managing the devices and so it can cause a problem. And I'll have to keep the mouse moving around a little bit uh, because otherwise, I don't, I, you know, I could track this down, but I don't want to spend that much time. So <clears throat> we'll work with this as it is so you guys can get an overview of what this, uh, what this is. It's, and this is a digital audio workstation. There's lots of them out there on the market. Um, I chose Sonar because I was, uh, years ago, I started off with uh, Cakewalk Home Studio. St home Studio and got used to it and uh, because of that when I upgraded and wanted to went into more professional type stuff I uh, decided to stick with it because I already knew it for, mo for the most part uh, so you know most of the digital audio workstations are pretty pretty much comparable uh, comparable uh, and the biggest issue is once you learn one because they are very complex you probably want to stick with it um, because it's just uh, the learning curve is, is significant. We won't be able to go through everything here because there's just a lot. Um, but I'll give you an overview. First of all, what you're looking at right now is the console. And this is where you would mix all of the different tracks. You see down here, I've got all the little mixing pods. Um, and you've also got a track view of what you do. And these are all the tracks that I brought in from Band in a Box. Now, I'll pre-warn you that uh, because of uh, some of the device interference that happens here, uh, we may have a little bit of a synchronization problem, but hopefully by moving this cursor around and keeping it moving, uh, it'll minimize that. Uh, this is an audio track that came out of Band in a Box. Um, this is a slide guitar that was produced, a, a real track. Hand claps, I put those in manually as MIDI, uh, but I have converted them to an audio track. So you can see over here, this is an audio track. Down here, now we get into the MIDI. Now this was the MIDI guitar that came out of Band in a Box. I have it here only as a placeholder because I'll eventually um, get rid of this and replace it with my own guitar that I, I record uh, here in the studio. Uh, but I kept it uh, for right now. And then uh, here's the banjo uh, that was produced out of Band in a Box. Again, MIDI. And those are going through this Cakewalk TTS down here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, Cakewalk is uh, the Cakewalk TTS is the synthesizer that comes with Cakewalk with uh, Sonar, um, and it's an all right um, synthesizer. But the problem that you get into is that as you deal with uh, more complex types of instruments, it's it tends to be very bland. <clears throat> so when it comes to things like a piano, this is the piano track that was produced out of Band in a Box. <coughs> I'm sorry, and uh, uh, so I use plug-in VSTs for this. Now, uh, this is the True Pianos VST, and uh, as you can see here, it, it's actually a sampled set of uh, sounds that come off of different types of pianos. So as you see here, I've got different types of pianos that I can select, and different presets for those pianos, uh, whether I want uh, the default sound or a clean sound or a bright sound, country, uh, classic, mellow, they're all listed there. Of course, I can adjust the reverb if I'd like, or the room size. Um, as to you know how it was uh, how I want the sound to to, to be, um, I can you know a little bit uh, better control over the velocity, how hard the keys are hit, and the keyboard dynamics, which really kind of equates more or less to to something like a compressor, um, and then the release down here, which allows me to manipulate uh, how long the foot pedals will be held uh, on the sustain pedal, um, you know to to blend it all out. So that would be true pianos, and I use that because it gives me a more robust, realistic sound. Down here, drum tracks um, that were produced out of band in a box. Now, I have hand manipulated these because it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So I had to hand manipulate some of that MIDI, uh, move some things around. But generally, it is the, the same track that came out of there. But instead of putting it through just a standard synth, I put it through um, a sampler synth called Easy Drummer. Now, Easy Drummer. This is a very interesting company. They uh, only produce drum kits. And uh, as you can see here, they have a pretty decent sound. Um, and uh, the, this is the Nashville drum kit. 
they have a hard rock drum kit and acid rock and hip hop and just on and on and on. Um, so they produce a very good product and very realistic sound. Uh, same with the bass. Bass is a very hard thing for most people to get right in a studio. Most people will tell you that. Um, the way I've found around it is I use this Dimension um, synth. It also comes with sonar, um, but it had uh, a couple of presets in there. The Simple Fingered uh, has a very nice sound to it, a very realistic sound. It's still, in and of itself, not sufficient. And what you'll notice, I'll go over here to the console, and in the console, uh, I've actually um, attached an effect called Studio Devil Virtual Bass Amp, which gives me the ability to um, uh, uh, <laughs> modify the cabinet size, whether it's a single speaker, du dual speaker, uh, any number of things like that, um, and, and tweak the sound so that I get a more realistic bass sound. Now, I'm going to play this for you. I don't know if it'll come out correctly or not, um, because, like I say, this sometimes um, <laughs> the uh, sonar is very unforgiving with other applications uh, trying to run. So I'll give it a shot, and maybe you can see what some of the difference is because you were able to hear this song uh, over there in Band in a Box, and maybe this will give you a better idea of what uh, of the effect these things have. Well, you know, if anything, maybe it gave you a little sense of how those uh, virtual plugins and everything else work. We could go on for hours on, uh, on you know, digital audio workstations and uh, how sonar works. That's not the purpose of this. I just want to introduce the tools and give you a sense of how I lay things out and uh, some of the tricks that I use. And next, we'll, we'll move on to the next set of tools.